So the topic for tonight is to celebrate the Rib's birthday. And the Rib is Quark Envy's wife. It is her birthday, and we are celebrating everything that is ginger and red and fun because she is a ginger and she's lots of fun and she's spunky and very intelligent intelligent and puts up with a lot of stubs crap <laughs> so we normally do wine antics live um thursdays at 9 p.m over on the wine antics page but because we've been away for a little while i thought we'd do this mobile more more kind of relaxed, kind of friendly, drink some wine. Um, talk about some red wines. Yeah, happy birthday to the rib. Yes, definitely. Um, drink some red wine. Talk about some ginger drinks, maybe, and just kind of go with that. Stop going to get his um, earbuds. Get a, get a beautiful view of his garage. Are you still using the iPad, Stub? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, now I can hear you much better, too. Less there echoey. You go. Bam. There you go. Bam. So Alina says, happy birthday to the rib. Yes. Happy birthday to the rib. It is the rib's yeah. birthday. I made her a delicious meal. <laughs> what did you make her? Yeah, what did you make her? Uh, you'll have to stay tuned for Supper with Sub tomorrow to find out. Oh, uh. not even a little teaser. <sighs> All right, we had a we had a seafood dish tonight. Ooh. A very simple seafood dish. That's usually served what in oval mean? oval ramekins at our favorite fast casual uh, seafood dining place. Red Lobster. There you go. <laughs> I'm I'm so smart. So S M R T S M R T. So I know uh, I kind of already talked about the red wine I'm drinking, of course, mm -hmm. the best red thing that we have out there besides the rib, mm -hmm. is, uh, red wine. That's and a pretty I, good one. I, I know, right? I yep. opened a Peachy Canyon. Nice. 2014 West Side, right? West Side. West Side. <laughs> West Side is the best Zin side. Zinfandel. It's quite tasty. Yes. So uh, I figured I would drink the best that there is next okay. to the rib. Well, nice. Next, the best, next best red thing next to the rib. There we okay. go. Yeah, we'll um, go. We'll while go with that. You, well, well, I answer or I ask you some questions, and then you tell us about your red beverages. I will do it. All right. All right. So let's do the first. Mm. My first question, and that is: Okay, who is a better gift giver? You are the rib. Mm, good question. Honestly, probably I'm going to, this is not, this doesn't mean she doesn't give good gifts, but I think it's probably me. Oh, honestly. So here's the other thing for years. We have not exchanged Christmas or birthday gifts for the most part. Hmm. Um, Cause we were just at a point where we figure anything we want that would be like some awesome Uber surprise is going to be expensive and we will do that together. That said, we do still like to be like, Oh, are we get each other anything for Christmas. No, no, no. And surprise. So I will tell you, she stepped up this Christmas and got me tickets to you two, mm -hmm. uh, coming up next month, uh, two months, what were we, April, May, June, two months from now, which is awesome. But I will say this tonight. She was, she was on her way home and mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I was out doing things today. And even though there was no great gift per se, I went and bought my own individual flowers because I love doing my own arranging, by the way. I know. It's a weird, it's one of those weird things I do. But I, I made two different arrangements in two different vases. One had the number of roses in her life representing her birthdays before we were together. And the other had the roses representing the number of birthdays we've been together. You are just yeah. nauseating. Yeah. Your boy <laughs> stub can still bring the high heat as far as the romance goes every now and again. I'm just saying. On a nauseating level. Very good. But, Very good stuff. <laughs> but we did that, and I had champagne, uh, a couple of bottles of champagne ready for her to toast and hang out with uh, neighbors who were wanting to wish her a happy birthday today. Oh, no. Not one bottle of champagne, but a couple. I had two because I also knew that I had other stuff to do, like cook her dinner, Come do Wine Antics Live coming back, which I'm very excited about, by the way. 
Um, so I'm like, yeah, two bottles with this crowd here. It'll last only but so long, and we can get inside and uh, get to our evening. Perfect. Yeah. It was cool. And All right, it's a but great... Yeah. Overall, I'm probably a better gift giver, but mm, she's a little more cre- – I don't know. I don't know. It's a tie because we're both – we don't give gifts, and then all of a sudden we just do. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing. It's the small but, things in and out on non-gift-giving days that makes the difference. Okay. Well, the How's next that? question will help you do it. We'll actually figure out who is the better gift giver. Okay. But I'm glad you brought, uh, brought up that Wine Antics Live, yes, is back again. If you guys yes. have, if anybody's tuning in right now, this is kind of an impromptu because we've been gone for about a month, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. we're coming back. This is our schedule. We hear mm -hmm. May and April, May, and one one day in June. The only day in May we won't be available is May 3rd. Right. But we're making up for that in June. And if you look in the description, if you're here, I've given you guys a way to get a reminder. So click the link in the description, and you'll get uh, Facebook Messenger reminders. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And Watch we won't out. even we won't even steal your uh, info either if you get reminders of that. Oh no, I'm I'm right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm not I'm not Mark. My name is not Mark. <laughs> I okay. Love, love my horns. Look at that. <laughs> oh look, <laughs> you, horns you, horns and a tiara at the same time. If I stand the right way. You know, Thanks. Adam could be trouble. He could just pop over and give you bunny ears. <laughs> pop over, crawl under. Run, run by shirtless and a cat mask or a horse head. I don't know what that guy might do. He's never done that before, has he? Not during wine antics, no. Mm. <laughs> so what are you drinking, Stubb? All right, so right now I'm drinking a cocktail that I uh, kind of hey, read, a, read a bit about, perfected a bit. Um, it's called a gin and ginger. Gin and ginger. Yes, because the rib loves gin, and she loves her spring and summer cocktails. Um, and the ginger, uh, that's self-explanatory. So we have some gin. We have some ginger syrup, which I made this afternoon. Um, lime Look juice. How fancy you are. A little, uh, a couple of dashes of bitters, uh, actually craft bitters I purchased in Vermont when I was there for the uh, beer marketing and tourism conference. It was actually the weekend after I found that. And then uh, you top it off with some ginger beer for a little pop. Delicious. Mm. Sipping on gin and ginger. Yeah, sipping on gin and ginger, yeah. <laughs> it should be refreshing. What would you think? Would you put a little mint in there? Would you, you could put a do some lime? mint. I've seen recipes, like kind of variations of this that called for mints. Uh, there's lime juice in there, so definitely lime. Okay. Uh, the More mint, lime. I think, would be great. I bought a mint plant uh, last week, and we had to trim it down because mint just goes crazy. So I didn't have enough leaves to add to this, but I think mint, a little mint or mint oil, like mint leaves or mint oil would be amazing in this. And I would just go with a couple of leaves. Just wash those things, clap them together, you know, and then – because when you clap them together, it releases the oils, right? That's uh, why you do that with the leaves. You clap a couple of together, drop it in the drink, releases some oils a little better. Yeah, the mint would really work well with this. So once I actually plant this thing, it's going to be awesome. What's up, is Anna? You know, I would think – so it's good to see you, Barb. I'm so glad you've caught us live as well. We're Hi, back. Barb. So Hi, Barb. Yeah. W a Wine Antics Live is back. So we're here for the month of April, most mm -hmm. all of – mostly all of May, and then one week in June because yes. we, we're on this two months on, one month mm -hmm. off schedule. But if yeah. you click in the description above, there's a little link for you to get reminders for when we go mm -hmm. live, whether we're here one week, not here the next. You're going to get reminders, so – just making it easier for everybody to catch us. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Uh, so the second question, and we'll yes. really find out who is the better gift giver. Let's do what it. Is the, what is the story behind the best gift you've given the rib? Mm, let me, wow. So FYI, Jen did not tell me these questions were coming. She said she had questions, but didn't tell me what they were. And I'm like, yeah, bring it, whatever. Yeah, because that's what I, cause I made them up like five minutes before we went live. <laughs> I mean, the best gift I've given the rib, I mean, I think you're looking at it. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Um, no, seriously, the best gift I ever gave the rib. Mm. All right, so here's the, here's the thing. For years and years, um, I wanted to get her a nice pair of diamond earrings. And it was okay. always like, because that is an expensive thing and, you know, 
she questions finances, not questions, but you know, keeps up with everything. Right. It was, it's a hard thing to get because it's, it's not a, it's not a low end item. Right. It's not like, Oh well, yeah, here's a, you know, here's a new, I don't know, coffee maker or a new sewing machine or whatever, whatever things people would want. Um, so it's been several years back now. We were out shopping with her parents and kind of with the pressure of her dad more than her mom, but both of them, I'm like, look, she's been needing, she needs a nice pair of diamond earrings. So I think that's it. Like, that's probably it. Honestly, the most thoughtful, I don't know, but that's probably like the biggest, coolest thing I've ever given her okay. in that sense, I guess. Once again, other than yours truly. Is that <laughs> now, is that the thing that she would say? Now that's your answer. Would she say the same thing? So think about it from her perspective. Is it an experience? Is it a really thoughtful moment? I mean. Yeah, you know what's weird is like that's a thing that is like, hey, this is a thing. So she's also very, um, she's way less self-indulgent than I am uh, in all aspects of life, uh, whether it be clothes, food, booze. Uh, things, anything. She's way less self-indulgent and way more cautious on spending money on things that that would be considered frivolous or, you know, bonuses or whatever. Luxuries. So I think in that sense, that was a thing and haven't talked her into it. But it was really cool seeing like, a, you know, like a week later, like she wore the earrings to work and she wears them a lot now, almost every day. And it's a pretty cool thing. Um Actually, you know what, though? The coolest thing I probably ever bought her was her engagement ring because she didn't see it coming, and that was pretty cool. But that, was, but that wasn't a birthday present. It wasn't a birthday present, and that's the other thing. Like, presents, we just we, – we have been together for years, a lot of years, and <laughs> it, like, like the gift things for special like occasions. 10, right? Like 10 years. It's, it's small things that, that, that we do for each other. Um, or small thoughts. And like I said, the, the flowers today um, with the dividing the number, you know, here's one that's years before, years after, but one for every year of her life. Like that was sweet. And that was a thing. So, yeah, I know. I think I, she, I'm not saying she's a simple person. She's very intelligent no, and course. an amazing oh, yeah. woman. But I, knowing, knowing the rib, I think mm -hmm. that she would really like – things being taken care of or little moments like that also more true. than a, a tangible object. And that Anna is... says, just hazarding a guess. So di so diamonds and stub would probably work. Well, yeah, she's stuck with him for a minute. So I think stub mm. works on most occasions. <laughs> I do actually. Yes. <laughs> so, wow. so on the converse of that, yes. what, okay. what's the best birthday gift she's given you because for everybody out there, next week, next Thursday, is Stubbs' birthday. It's true. Next week <laughs> is my birthday. I'll be turning 29. It's an amazing time. I've got to figure out what I'm doing in life and move forward from there. But, um, <laughs> wow, that's a tough one. So she did – two things come to mind immediately. Uh, there was a birthday uh, – and once again, it's a couple of years ago because we were watching this in reruns like 15, 20 years after it had been off the air, 90210. There was an episode where Donna, I believe, that's uh, the spelling, the spelling girl, right, got her boyfriend, Tori. and I can't remember his name on the show, uh, Ian Ziering, whatever his name was, got Steve Young to show up for his birthday, quarterback for the San Francisco okay. 49ers, because he was a big fan. We were in Okinawa at the time, when we saw that, and I said, hey, are you going to have Troy Aikman come for my birthday? And she goes, yeah, I'm going to get on that. Well, lo and behold, what did end up happening is she ordered, she got a legit signed photograph of Troy Aikman and had a buddy of mine frame it for me, and that's what she gave me for my birthday. So that was like really, it was cheeky and funny. Something also I still have, I mean, it's hanging in our home right now um, in a bedroom. So that was a pretty cool one. The other thing was for a milestone birthday, and FYI, I'm not turning 29 next week. So for my 30th birthday. <laughs> For my 30th birthday. For his real uh, 30th birthday. She did, it, she did a big surprise for me and had a bunch of people over here at the house and uh, had some friends come and make some steaks. And um, while doing that, sent me out doing some uh, manly thing with the men's in the neighborhood where the back of our SUVs look 
more armed than the A team van. So we went and did, you know, fun man stuff that we do. Um, yeah. Out at an open range in West Virginia, that was pretty cool, and that was a pretty cool, thoughtful thing. Because all I want, all I want really to celebrate personally is people and good times. Maybe some good food, some good booze is great, but she always delivers on that. Whether it's us together, us with a bunch of other people. So, yeah, she's she's hit it. She's hit it big a couple times. All right. So you guys have heard it. Stubbs, mm -hmm. uh, Stubbs' idea of what his best gift was to the rib, and then her best gift to him. Mm -hmm. So that was diamonds from the mm -hmm. rib, or mm -hmm. for the rib, diamonds mm -hmm. for the rib. Sure. And then a a man mancation or man in steak man staycation. Mm, okay, I mean, Cation. yeah, all right. We went and did manly things, of course. Yeah. So yeah. you you guys you guys tell me wh who do you think is the better gift giver? Who do you think between the two of them is the better gift giver? Mm. Hearing those stories, while Stub mm. tells us about the second drink, he is. Uh, Owing to the to the gingers. This is all about celebrating the gingers because sure. it is the ribs birthday. Do you know only uh one to two percent of the entire planet is redheads? Of mm -hmm. humans on the entire planet are redheads. One to two percent. That's it. Yeah. Wow, I, I didn't know that. I know. So aside from bagging myself a marine, as I always brag about, I also bag myself a redheaded marine. That's even crazier. Yeah, all the trouble you could ask for. <laughs> steak, Anna, Anna, that steak was delicious, too. Our friends had, like, taken a class, and they're like, grilling? No, we're going to saute all this stuff for, like, 40 people at the house. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> yes, no, and, not Miss yes. Clarell. Of course, natural redheads, and I'm going to – okay, yes, natural redheads. Yes. <laughs> you were so close to saying something else. I know it. The so thing about drinking? natural redheads is they have they have a great um, a great penchant for decorating. That's I'll say that. Uh, so right now, what I'm drinking, and I've got a glass here that's that's full, so I can't pour it. Ninkasi Brewing Company Double Red Ale. It's a seasonal release from them. Mm. So a little hoppy. I just discovered this, or I just found it last the, sometime in the last week, and I'm like, oh, this will be great for the show. I'm going to drink it. And I didn't have a <laughs> Somebody was going to say it, but it wasn't us. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a red ale is a good ale. And this is a – I was intending to get the uh, Port City Metro Red Ale that they do seasonally now in the spring, summer, or kind of early spring and into the summer because uh, it's a little creamy but got a little bite to it still. And I found this in the Kasi out of Oregon, which is uh, just a great brewing company. I love these guys. Um, so I decided to try this, and this is really good. Because what's better than one red? Two reds. Or three. I mean, because we're talking about all reds I mean, tonight. I can't, I, I can't speak for three because, you know, I am but a mere mortal. Okay. <laughs> and you are no longer in your 20s. <laughs> that is a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> and we and and I know from my best friend in the core, who's also one of the ribs' best friends as well. He always used to remind us that redheads are fickle and scary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Okay. This no. red wine is not fickle, though. It's very I'm tasty. Just saying. I know. All right, so my third question kind of goes along with the theme of drapes and curtains. Let's do so it. So since it's ladies' choice tonight, missionary or doggy style? Wow. <laughs> Am I supposed to answer that, or are we supposed to wait for the ladies to answer that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Mostly I asked that question just for that reaction. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you go ahead and take wow. another sip of that. You may need it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm just I'm just waiting for comments to roll in here because yeah. Once again. So hey, Cindy, long time no see. We are celebrating uh, the ribs birthday, and that's Stubbs' we are. wife. 
Yep. Uh, and we are celebrating with all things red and ginger. I know, Jessica, what kind of show is this? I'm this asking is, myself that same question, Jessica. This, this is a, a mobile, very fun, very loose kind of show tonight. Uh, kind of talking about why Antics Live is back and our morals may be questionable. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Um, <laughs> I can't wow. wait to download this. Mm. <laughs> Jeez, mm. Louise. Mm. No, I don't actually expect you to answer that question. A lady doesn't tell these things, and I wouldn't expect otherwise. Uh, but it was definitely worth the reaction. <laughs> what? Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a funny way to answer that. It's not a little too outside the box, but um, let's see. I'm going to say it depends on the height of the surface on which you're engaging in your activity. Well, okay. That was way mm. too logical of an answer. Well, <laughs> but, you know, it makes sense if you don't think about it, Jen. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I'm still thinking. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop thinking. I need to brillo my mind now. Brillo my mind. <laughs> I'm saying to, to, it depends on the it depends on height. It depends on the height because that changes angles. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a third drink in mind to celebrate the ginger and the redheads of the world. I do, and I'm not going to be I'm not going to be enjoying it tonight uh, because. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, but I will say, I thought about so anything red Geometry. wine, obviously, right? <laughs> anything red mm -hmm. wine is. Um, um yeah wow there's a pythagorean theorem joke in there somewhere that i can't make right now um so i was thinking of like red wine and wh what is the rib love what do i love Ooh. so i get into the gingies and i get to red brown blends red brown blends okay yeah i think uh, uh yeah grenache syrah maved I think Ooh. that is probably the wine that, uh, and we enjoy all wines together as often as we can. I think, though, for the difference of opinion, the difference of enjoyment, but the mutual enjoyment at the same time, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that the Rhone blends are probably the one I would go to. Because like redheads, they're a little fickle. They're a little rough around the edges, right? You, you go north, you go south, you get a little bit smoother, less smooth, but they're rough around the edges. They all want to punch you in the face or in your palate space when you taste them. They're savory. They're delicious. They're amazing. Um, and Wow, I just saw the Red Room <laughs> comment and lost it. Red Room, Red Room. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, I think I think for the two of us together, and I think my my life with a gingy, I would go with red roan blends as a uh, as the way to go there. I think that is a perfect. If we're celebrating all things ginger, that to me is because you never know what you're going to get. It's fickle. Okay. It's fickle, like redheads. It's fickle and scary. Right. So that made me oh, think Jesus. of other redheads we know in our in our life. Sure, I think that's a really great pairing for you it. for the, for this for the rib. But mm -hmm. what about Lori Lori Bud Hoyt? I mean, we know she's a huge fan of Pinot Noir, right? I mean, come on, seriously. <laughs> what a, I mean, that's a softball, Jen. You just toss that up. I mean, that's a that's an easy hit no. out of the park with Lori. Huh. No, I had to think. I actually had to think a little bit deeper for that one. There was a bigger softball I could have given. So, all right, who is that? What is that? JVB. Well, tell, tell tell us Lori's though softball. Well, that's very so easy. It's Cab Franc. It's Cab Franc all the is. way, all every day. But I think what's is. interesting about Lori is that it's not. You know, she's producing wine out of out of California, so it's a California yes. Cab Franc. But she's also right. splitting her time in New Jersey. Right. And New Jersey is doing some fun stuff. They do they do Vitis vinifera and Cab Franc. So yep. I think she's a bicoastal Cab Franc. What? Because you know, redheads can be a little bipolar. I mean, you get bicoastal with a gingy, and you don't know what you're in for at that point. <laughs> I mean, already 
Party on the right side, party on the left side. I'm just saying, yeah. There's there's no business there's no business on either end of that. It's party on both ends. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Wait, that didn't come out right. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I tell Lori that. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah. As far as the cab franc, though, yeah, you're right about that, and that is the we get into the the fickleness of the of the redheads there, right? Um, you get a West Coast cab franc, and then even how I'm going to bring it all the way East Coast. Like cab francs we have down here are going to be a little more a uh, little more earthy, a little more minerally. You get up north into Jersey and the Finger Lakes, and those things get a little bit brighter and younger and fresher. It's a it's a really interesting uh, back and forth with those. And I love it. And then you get Lori's on the West Coast. Oh, that's just – it's almost kind of a little bit of a best of both worlds, honestly, on the West Coast part. I know. Okay. Left Coast is the best coast. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would agree with you. But I love tasting Cab Bronx from both coasts. For anybody out there that um, is looking for a varietal mm. to taste both on the East Coast – and get a great comparison to the West Coast. I love yeah. Cab Franc for that. You may not find so many of them on the West Coast, but yeah. they are definitely very different. And you can really, I, I love taking one varietal and just dissecting it on both ends to see what I like about it. And what's awesome is you bring up Cab Franc, which is, you know, as a single varietal wine, is, is not a, a majorly produced single varietal. Just like redheads, yeah. right? You don't have a lot of single, single redheads. Or uh, true redheads <laughs> of true of true redheads. You don't have a lot of single varietal cap prongs anywhere in the world. No. So when you can get that from the East Coast and a couple of examples on the East Coast and and on the West Coast, you really get to see the difference in the in the terroir and the place and and how those things uh, how those those deal with. And even Texas, as Lori's saying here, like it's just it's it's all different. And that's one that you know uh, because Send it them is. My way, Lori. Yeah, because – but Cab Franc also, like, you know, Cab Sauv, you can do Cabernet Sauvignon anywhere um, here on the East Coast, just even this far south. Like, it a lot of times doesn't get as ripe. So what happens is we let it get overripe here, and I say we as an industry. Uh, so it's overripe or as overripe as we can get it, a little overextracted. And if it doesn't get all the way ripe because we have early frost, we end up getting these green notes on it. And they're not quite ripe, even though we've let them hang longer. Hello, Chris Ballard. Um, so I think, though, with Cap Franc, is is an interesting grape because you do get this sense of place with all of those. If you get a single varietal or, you know, 85 to 90% single varietal, anything labeled Cap Franc from any coast, any region, taste those things together in the same year because it, that really gives you a good idea of the differences in wine. It really does. Oh. Yeah, because I don't know of anyone unless – Jen, I don't know. I'm sure someone is. I'm going to say this, and someone watching is going to be like, oh, no, blah, 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 like 17 wineries. I don't know anyone doing a, like a stainless steel fermented Cab Franc. So Cab Franc is how long do you let it hang? Uh, so when do you pull it? At what bricks and sugar level? So you get that. Everyone's putting in oak. No one's putting – I don't – that I know of in like super okay. new okay. oak. Okay. Because it'll kill it. Do you it. see that rabbit hole? You have just you. explored the rabbit hole that is Cab Franc. Let's take it back Same. to celebrating the gingers. One to two percent. <laughs> That's the one percent. Okay. Gingies are the one percent. Okay. Chris, Franc's tell him to take it back because he needs to take this back. Take this back to this discussion. So before we go on to JVB, who is one of yes. our, you know, our other favorite gingies, right? Um, yes. I want to let you know, everybody that has joined us, uh, we are celebrating all things red and mm -hmm. ginger because it, it's the Rib's birthday. It and is. we wanted to, to throw it out to her. She had a great dinner. And mm -hmm. to celebrate the fact that Wine Antics Live is back for the months of April and May and one the first week of June. Yes. If you guys kind of miss us and you don't know when we come back live, I've put a link up in the description. There is a reminder there for you. All you got to do is click the button and you're going to get reminders uh, oh. care of yours truly. And you'll know when we go live. Where is she? You mean the rib? Probably. She is, she is yeah. a floor above behind the door behind me. Behind uh, Lori, look at that! Look at that hat, Lori. You'll love the hat. <laughs> and that the hat, and I the... had to retire last year after like twenty years. And then that tiara is from our good friend uh, Thea. By the way, yep. the first the first weekend I ever met her, that is her tiara. And then the uh, 
the skull from the uh, bovine there is from my father-in-law because he's like every Texas guy needs a uh, yeah need, need needs needs a cow skull in his in his uh, garage. So and you're you just propagating that. <laughs> and right next to it, look at that signed Robert Earl King T-shirt. Okay, now that Stubb is giving us a grand tour of his garage, JBB, mm-hmm. one of our favorite gin- gingies, what what pairs well with JBB? So here's what's weird to me about JVB is uh, he is a human is rough around the edges. He's one of my favorite people, by the way. I say that with love and uh, adoration, and I love the guy, and he's a brilliant, brilliant, uh, great palate, uh, great collector of wine, great friend also. Um, You want to get in his cave. I do, but, man, JVB, oddly enough, that guy has such a – as rough around the edges as he is as a human. And, and I, once again, I say that with love. He's a great friend. And, and I, I think with him, that guy's a burgundy because he's, he's also fickle. Redheads are fickle, right? But yeah. burgundy, red burgundies are also fickle. And that goes for all Pinot Noirs. Pinot Noir is fickle. Fickle AF. And but I think if I had to pick a wine for JVB, it would be a red burgundy because that guy will appreciate all versions of it. Uh, he'll appreciate the fruit. He'll appreciate the barnyard. He'll appreciate all of the stuff about it and be able to talk intelligently about it all the way through, which also puts him in that one to two percent category, not only for being a redhead, but also for being a great wine connoisseur. Mm-hmm. I completely agree, and I would piggyback off that because I know JVB is having an extensive wine collection. The cave you want to get all up in, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of equate him to anything old and French. Mm-hmm. And it's not because he himself is old, but because he has an extensive mm-hmm. collection, and he just is the, the man that I would go to and would love to uh, drink something very old, very collectible, mm-hmm. and he would have that knowledge in, mm-hmm. in helping you to understand mm-hmm. what is collectible in terms of wine. Absolutely. So what I got from that, Jen, and I totally agree with you on a very serious note, but for those of us of a certain age or who are fans of comedy – and or Saturday Night Live. Garth Brooks hosted Saturday Night Live. It was probably in the 90s at some point. And they did a skit called Old French Whore. So what I got from that is you're calling JVB an old French whore. Okay. JVB, we'll go you're, with that. JVB you're an old French whore. <laughs> Can't wait to tag him after this live stream. You and heard it here first, my friend. You're, cheers to the old French whore. <laughs> So another one that um, there's two other women that come to mind in terms of redheads, um, and that is Penny Sadler, okay. who is uh, Ventures of a tr- mm. of a Carry On, okay. and then Michelle. I can't remember her last name, but she was wasn't that Rock and Red blog? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It was recently her birthday, like one or two days ago. Okay, I don't know Michelle as well personally. Uh, Penny, oh my gosh. Penny is up for anything, though. Like, I mean, from what I know of her, and once again, we're not BFFs or anything. Well, she's up on Texas Chick, too, so don't forget that. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. So, I mean, anything red, anything adventurous, I mean, that adventure of a suit, I mean, yeah, she's up for kind of whatever, and I like that adventurousness. I like that exploratory uh, thing, and that's, I mean, that's been my experience with uh, gingers as well. <laughs> Up for anything. Well, she's up for anything and down to travel, especially to Italy. So yeah. I see her as, uh, I think a little. Oh, Ooh, she, okay, that's true. Look, she she's does not, love Italy. I'm be, I'm not gonna say that she's some old maid, but she's no. not in her twenties anymore. So she's a little more seasoned. So instead yeah, of being a Barbera, I mean, I, I don't want to call you out, Penny. I mean, she's like thirty-two. No, that's fine. No, look, that's not what it's about. No, <laughs> she's not a Barbera. She's uh, a Barbaresco or Brunello mm. for me mm. because that's where I love. Where I love to drink Italian mm. wine. Okay. So I'm just saying. Mm, I like that. Throwing like the that love thinking, Jen. of Italian wines in there. I like that thinking, Jen. Yeah. I like it. This, this became a, a, a wine blogger and a wine pairing. <laughs> yeah, you've really thrown me for a loop here. <laughs> like, You're welcome. Right. Uh, whatever. <laughs> so uh, I saw um, Carol popped in. Hello, Carol. 
Thank you for keeping the comments going, Anna. Well, for some things, you just want experienced, knowledgeable people. Oh, yeah, totally. Jim, that's your guy. We're waiting to get him on to Wine Antics Live. We are. To talk about uh, cellaring. He's going mm -hmm. to be our seller master for mm -hmm. Wine Antics Live. We just mm -hmm. have to get on his schedule because the man, like, produces, in terms of audio, Broadwood, Broadway plays. So he's kind of busy. He's legit. Yeah, he's legit. <laughs> he is legit. <laughs> so uh, the only other person is I, I've had limited experience with is <clears throat> Michelle. And mm -hmm. I know she celebrated a birthday recently. Mm hmm May I, I kind of think of her. I've met her once or twice. She's really fun, really mm -hmm. bubbly in person. Mm -hmm. And she's, I mean, rocking red, red blog. Mm -hmm. Like she embraces the fact that she's a redhead. Oh, yes. you know who we didn't even mention? Thea. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to Michelle before we get to Thea, because Thea's a good one to end on. So I would say uh, <laughs> Michelle is definitely New World. I think because mm -hmm. she's a lot of fun, really bubbly. I would even say she's like Chile mm -hmm. or uh, uh, or Argentina. Oh, I like yeah, I like. like we're gonna mm. go that way. Little firecracker in her. I'm gonna even go Chilean. I, I'm, I'm going Chilean, more Argentinian with her. Chilean yeah. cab. Yeah, I'll okay. give you that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah, a little Argentina fun. Malbec? Kind of up for whatever. She's fun, but Chilean. Argent the Malbec, though, it's, it's, a, it's a thing now. Like, everyone knows that, right? So I'm going to go Chilean cab with her because it it's frivolous. It's fun. It's, it's uh, adventurous with her. I'll give you that. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. You want to talk about the 1%? We can, we can equate her to Brazilian bubbles. So Brazil is a wine producer. And mm -hmm. they produce bubbles really nicely, but nobody knows about it. And it's like mm -hmm. a hidden gem as well. We're mm -hmm. going to just dump all of our wine knowledge into celebrating the fact that Wine Antics Live is back for the month of April and May. Yeah, and the thing about the Brazilian bubbles is this they could just... This could be a good replay. <laughs> they just... The Brazilian bubbles, I feel like, they just... Um, they really make it clap, Right. And make your taste buds clap, the Brazilian bubbles. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Next I did question, not see Jen. that coming. I know. <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> thank you for Two the imagery. Two can play at this game. Two can play at this <laughs> thank game. You. Thank you for they the just, imagery. They just, make your, they just make your taste buds clap. Okay. Can you do a parody on that? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we've been doing this for about two and a half years now. We can mm -hmm. we can poke we can poke each other. Mm, a little bit. A little, <laughs> a little bit. bit. Uh, oh, I have a thing for Brazilian leather. Oh, stop Is it. it. An older oh, man that you're likes not, to be on you're the beach. Not, you're not making this any easier right now. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're gonna end this on um of course Thea. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm going to, I'm not diming Thea out, but I don't know if Thea is au natural or she's a little clairol. I can, <laughs> I can assure you, I do not know that. <laughs> Good. Neither of us do. Hey, Angela. <laughs> but she, she is more often than not a redhead. So we will celebrate her redheadness. As well as the stubs, or the stubs, the the ribs birthday, which is yes. why we're talking about red red wine and ginger beverages. Do you have another drink, by the way? On me right now? No. Okay, <laughs> just no. making sure if I forgot. <laughs> no, no, we covered just kind of three drinks, three red drinks. Um, I thought about doing a redheaded slut shot, but that seemed a little weird. And, um, no, that would be I, that would be totally appropriate right now. I also, well, I don't have all the stuff to make it, and that I don't know. That's that's a little. Yeah, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a frat boy. Um, sure. Thea, we gotta give Thea a red. This is tough for me. No, you're gonna so, go first on this one. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, no, no. It, we're gonna name. We're gonna pair. We're gonna pair Thea as a redhead with wine. Uh, see, this is a tough one for me. Mm. I know Thea has a long history with Sonoma County. 
like she's got a history with Sonoma County before Sonoma County was a thing. Like Napa was a thing. Thea Thea's known Sonoma for a long time. But you get into you can go one of two different ways there. You can go to the RRV Pinos or you can go to the Cabs. I know she knows other areas with the Zins. I know she's a huge fan of Rose. Because of what we think may or may not be the case, I'm going to say that Thea is a rosé. Oh, finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. She definitely is. And she has knowledge. And my point being, I, I, I love Thea and respect her knowledge of the wines. But, but I'm going to say it's with the rosé. This is, this is all fun. No, We're I know. It's also fun, too. It's super also knowledgeable. fun, too. I totally get it. But it's also fun, too. So I'm going to go with the rosé because um, – you also never know what you're going to get with Thea. Sometimes she's going to be bold and brash, and sometimes she's just going to kind of wave as she passes by, and you'll talk to her later. So I'm going to go with Rosé for Thea for that reason. Drive by thea ing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It happens. I mean, it happens with everyone, right? But I think, yeah, I think that's a perfect thing for Thea. I think Rosé is perfect for Thea. Perfect. And for mm -hmm. anybody who's joining us now, I see Anna has, has mm -hmm. given a shout-out to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How are you? Um, we are just kind of, we've wrapped up celebrating uh, Stubbs' wife's birthday, which is today. So that's the Ribs' birthday, and she is a redhead, so we're celebrating all things that are red and no. gingerific. And no. right now, and we've kind of paired a couple beverages. We've talked about gift giving between Stubb mm -hmm. and his wife. Mm -hmm. And we're coming now towards the end where we're talking about our favorite wine bloggers mm -hmm. uh, who are redheads. We're celebrating mm -hmm. them as well. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we're on a little, little sidebar that Stubb had no idea we're doing. Karen um, McNeil's <laughs> got a little bit of a little bit of an Auburn-y thing going most of the time, right, with her hair? Oh, I totally agree. Thea is mm. a, a rosé. And mm. I agree that she's a rosé mm. because she she is totally the entire gamut. She is effervescent oh. and bubbly m most of the mm -hmm. time, but then she can give mm -hmm. you some rich and some interesting characteristics from wine you didn't expect. And because she Agreed. let me invade her fridge and I stole mm. a beautiful bubbly rosé from Iron Horse when she mm. said I could open anything mm -hmm. do not tell me i can open anything in your fridge see i tell people that but if i tell people that i know what's in there yeah right? she she should have known what was in there i don't go say pull anything off the shelf i say open anything in here <laughs> like the you gotta okay, limit let's it caveat this because no. like thea's fridge was was full of because she split. She split between uh, San Francisco and Santa yes. Rosa. So the True. Santa Rosa house was had like breakfast food, mm -hmm. yes. maybe some scattered lunch, and like there's no dinner in there, mm -hmm. right? And right. then I'm not even going to lie, 10 bottles of wine, none of which of have course. been open, but they're all just chilling. So her yeah. main fridge is her no. wine fridge. Right. Sure. So she's like, go ahead, open anything. I asked twice. Twice. I gave, I, I gave her the ability to be like, no, don't open any bubbles. No. <laughs> no, she's like fun. No. Yeah. But Iron Horse Rosé, that's a pretty good pick. That was amazing. That's and I pick. will say, I got the least portion of that <laughs> that night. She got the majority of it because she's like, okay, if you're going to open it, I'm going to get lots of it. <laughs> she's like, fill you. it up. Let's go. Yep. All right. Hmm. So, so we need to close this um, up, right? Just yeah, this we've had okay. more fun than I think. I think I this turned into just around. basically us, us drinking and hanging out and talking yeah. and chilling, which is cool. That's so a good way to start back. I know, right? Maybe maybe we'll do these as we start back every, you know, every third month or so because this is a I good like night. It. I just need to find yeah. a better surface for my iPad in the garage instead of being up in the studio. Other than that, yes. I'm good to go with lighting. I've got lighting. Look at this. I got well, a new haircut today. I got a you great did. new haircut today from my boys at the, the neighborhood barbershop. No, I went to uh, my boys at the neighborhood barbershop in uh, Falls Church. Yeah, it's they're good. Nice if you're in Northern Virginia, those guys are those guys are legit. Okay, you you gonna also, wash your car too? Are you ready for all, the weekend? All <laughs> the week. Yeah, I'm gonna wash my car for snow. <laughs> no, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Not got a crap boy. Yeah, got a nice cut from a boys and yeah. Having a good day. <laughs> hi, Jamie. No, hi, Jamie. <laughs> so there is no after party tonight. Why? Because wh- I'm not going from the mobile device. To- Stop it. You need Why? to go spend time you with your wife. You gotta have an after party. It's, Sorry, it's her party. Oh, I spent time with her earlier. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I did not set up the after party, nor did I provide the link. I'm sorry. You're just going to have to come back next week. That's true. When we will be live again. And it's Stubbs' birthday next week. Yes, it is. Next week is my birthday. That's true. On his birthday, he will be with us for Wine Antics Live. So next week is going to be awesome. It's totally going to be on the Wine Antics page. So you're going to have to go to the description of this live stream, click on the Wine Antics reminders link, Mm -hmm. and get the reminders and be with us for the next couple months. We're going to be live. We're moving. We've been on this two months on, one one month off schedule so we can, like, get some work done, right? Yeah, it's it's weird, but it works. I mean, you know, you people keep showing up. What are we we doing next week for the show, Jen? What's that? What's next week's show about? Your birthday? I know. We're doing a show about Stubbs' favorite things next week. Yes, we are. Mm. <laughs> yes, we are. So, well, you get to talk about your favorite things. I get to That's talk true. about whatever I want to. <laughs> also true. That's true, too. But it is all about Stubbs next week. Yeah, which is And maybe a little really... supper with Stubbs? Really embarrassing and shy for me. Uh, you know, I'm really shy. <laughs> Anna says more of this. Well, we haven't yeah. had, we haven't had a like a live stream like this. Nor have I drank. I, I've drank a good chunk of that bottle of wine. I haven't done that much on live stream. Oh, that that ginger cocktail is. I really hit it out of the park with this. You were thing. literally slurping that. Well, also That's I didn't strong. I didn't have that whole cocktail. Like the rib had about a little less than half of it. Um, because it was her birthday cocktail that I created for her for the show. Um Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm favorite also glad I have stub. Yeah. My favorite things of stub. My favorite one of my favorite things, I'll tell you right now, this is a teaser for next week. <laughs> Beer? Ple- ple- pleasing my lady. That's one of my favorite things. Oh my god. <laughs> pleasing my lady is one of my favorite things. And vinyl and bourbon and Well, there's other things. I love other things. I'm just saying. You love other things. It's top five. Yeah. No, no. You're <laughs> and his uh name plated beer glass there. Yes. Stub accessorizes with the best. His Jimmy Choo penny loafers. That's oh, hard that's to true. see. I know it is. I know. I know. It's yeah. light. It's weird. It's hard to see in every lighting. Okay. That. All right. I'm going to finish this up, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. This was a great way to kind of introduce going back to Wine Antics Live. We hope to see you over April and May. Yes, and we do. Into June. We'll be back on the Wine Antics page starting next Thursday. Good night. Bye, Stubb. Bye. (laughs)